So, welcome to the Ryerson Energy Center in Toronto. Uh, my name is Peter Hickman, I'm the collections curator here uh, at the Ryerson Energy Center, which we call RIC. Uh, it's a new facility. We opened uh, September 2012, uh, but it's been in planning for many, many years before that. So, we're here in the colonnade. Uh, it's the entry point to the, to the galleries. Uh, and behind us is the Sala J. Bashir Media Wall. It's, for us it's been very interesting with this exhibition. We had not at any time prior to this assembled all the images of Canada in the Black Star Collection. <clears throat> so it was the first opportunity to uh, get a look at how another country viewed us, in particular our cousins to the south. So some of the photographers are actually Canadian, some are not. Um, but <clears throat> they present a view of Canada that's, that's um, a kind of earnest, hard-working people who, who are friendly and cooperative. That seems to be the tone in a lot of the images. I don't want to say that it's, it's a kind of cliched view, but it rests on a perception that wouldn't necessarily be generated by us as a country ourselves. So it's fascinating. It's of its time. Uh, it's really 50s and 60s, a lot of the imagery. Um, and that's actually quite a long time ago now, so we live in a very different reality. So there's kind of nostalgia to it as well, uh, which, is, which is fascinating to, to see. Uh, Pierre Tremblay's done a terrific job of assembling the imagery and sequences that conveys a flavor of the work, of the country as it's perceived uh, at that time, uh, and also the nature of the collection, because he shows us the backs of the prints as well. And in a photojournalistic collection, uh, it's critical to look at, to turn them over, because it really, often you'll find the traces of the lives these prints have lived, in terms of being reproduced, sent around, brought back. Uh, a press print is a, is a very particular photographic object, so that, I think, comes through in this, uh, in this work. So now we're in the atrium uh, of the Ryerson Image Center. We call it the Great Hall. It's fairly great. It's not as great as other great halls, but it's, it's our great hall. And, uh, the uh, theme behind all four exhibitions on now is the, uh, the, the passage of time and the end of analog photography. Each of them touches on that in its own way. So uh, I have behind me here a uh, Kodak emulsion kettle, which was used from 1916 to 1974 to literally to mix emulsion in uh, here in Toronto at the Kodak plant uh, in, in North Toronto. Um, for us, it's an object of tremendous uh, beauty, for one, but also nostalgia for a process that is now essentially over. But the theme of the exhibition, being analog, uh, has behind me here uh, two vitrines full of analog cameras, film cameras. Uh, it's amazing, when you look at these cameras, there's a nostalgia around them that 10 years ago you would not have experienced, because they're the cameras everybody was using. Now, of course, everyone's using digital cameras, their phones, whatever. It's rare that you see a film camera. So it, it sets a nice tone for the exhibitions which spin off uh, north, south, and the west of us here. So uh, we're now in the main gallery for the Ryerson Image Center. And uh, this is the site of an exhibition called The Disappearance of Darkness by Robert Burley, who's a Toronto-based photographer who actually teaches with us. Um, Robert Burley's focus uh, is on, as the title suggests, the end of analog photography. And uh, he saw this coming and began working on the project, I, I think, in, in 2005. And uh, he knew people at Kodak in Rochester. Uh, he knew people at the Kodak plant here in Toronto. And he was given uh, access to uh, the buildings as they were being emptied. Uh, some cases literally blown up. Uh, so he documented the whole process, and uh, it's been a lengthy one, but if you look at it in the time frame of the existence of analog photography, it's actually, in fact, very, very brief, uh, because the end of analog came with startling speed, as we have witnessed. This, uh, just behind me, there's a, a piece that uh, is made up of Bob's um, uh, Polaroid test prints. So he was testing for exposure with his 4x5 camera. He held on to these 
they're not fixed, so they're, of course, ephemeral, and they're slowly disappearing with the passage of time. So the curator of the exhibition, Gal Morel, uh, refers to this as a performance piece in a way because as we stand looking at it, it is actually disappearing before our eyes. So what's interesting here is that this is something that happens with photographs anyway. Photographs are highly unstable and affected by light and chemical imbalances in their makeup and uh, in the fullness of time will slowly fade. These are fading fast, so it's a metaphor for the, the transience of this kind of medium. Well, I'm standing here beside Robert Burley's uh, a really astonishing document of the end of one of the uh, two of the buildings in Rochester, in Kodak Park, buildings 65 and 69. This is 2007. Uh, the buildings were slated for destruction. They were packed with dynamite, and they were uh, blown up in front of their, their former uh, staff and employees, who, of course, photographed this with their iPhones and digital cameras and video cameras. Bob was standing behind them with a 4x5 uh, film camera, and he documented this, this whole extraordinary moment on, on film. So we're here in the University Gallery, uh, which is now holding uh, the exhibition of Phil Bergerson, a Canadian photographer who, uh, since 1994, I believe, has been photographing uh, the, the uh, outskirts of small towns, mostly in the United States, uh, parts of big cities. It's, it's a, basically, it's, it's the cultural detritus the edge of urban centers, large and small, uh, across North America. So he did some of the work in Canada, but eventually realized that he was drawn toward the US, uh, which has a perhaps more uh, flamboyant display of this uh, detritus. The, the